thanks for staying with us. We're back on I-24 News. Our coverage of the election here in Israel continues. Let's get the view from the U.S. In New Jersey, we're joined now by Mark Levinson, the chairman of the American Zionist Movement, and Nomi Goldmax, the chair and executive committee and vice president of Amenu. Thank you both uh, for being with us this hour. Uh, I'm still joined in studio by our Owen Alterman and Mitchell Barak. Um, Mark, uh, let's start with you. Just give me your, uh, let's say, first impressions of the numbers we're seeing as they're coming in uh, this hour. Uh, it looks maybe like another political stalemate. Others might see a uh, path forward for Netanyahu to form a government and stay on as prime minister. What do you make of the results as we're seeing right now? Well, first of all, Bokatov there in Israel. I can't wait to get there in June for a nephew's wedding. But we got to deal with this right now, so we're here. Uh, I'm excited about the results. I would have liked to have seen uh, it be a little bit stronger, for uh, specifically for some of the right-wing parties right now. But I think ultimately, uh, you have Netanyahu and and his uh, and the religious parties. Uh, you have Bennett. I don't see Bennett and and Yamina going anywhere else. Uh, at the end of the day, Gideon Saar. Uh, I mean, I don't see how he sits with Yair Lapid. He claims he's to the right of Bibi Netanyahu. So I don't see how he goes anywhere. And Lieberman is uh, probably one of the few folks that has kept his word of, of never sitting with Netanyahu. But overall, I, I view the uh, electorate as being 70, 75 right-wing parties or right-of-center parties. And so I, I believe at the end of the day, uh, when the haggling is finished, I think you'll see Netanyahu government. I think you'll see uh, Naftali Bennett as defense minister. Where Gideon Saar sits, I don't know right now. But his people will certainly want to push him uh, to sit in a, in a Netanyahu government. Nomi, do you see it the same way, or do you see maybe another scenario playing out? Um, uh, Booker Tov, well, of, of course, uh, I see it differently. Um, I, um, I see that there are some great successes on the left. Um, guess what? Labor is not dead. Merit is not dead. Uh, Benny Gantz is still there. These are these are key. Um, uh, I, I will confess that I am saddened uh, by seeing that how Bibi orchestrated um, new right wing parties um, coming in and legitimizing them. Um, that's tough. That's tough to take. I think that's tough for Israel. I think it's upsetting, and I think it's upsetting for most Israelis. Uh, and I think it's early. Uh, you know, we know we're going to be doing this for another day or two. We know that there are, they're talking about 600,000 double envelope voters. Uh, we heard that the IDF has had a large, the largest turnout in 20 years, but sadly the Arab vote is especially low and that it's the lowest uh, uh, turnout in the elections overall since 2003. Um, so I think there's lots to do. There's, there's horse trading to be made. There is an anti-BB a group of parties that are not just on the left. Um, um, and Gideon Saar has said that he will not sit with Bibi. Um, so um, uh, while Bibi just gave a fantastic election speech a few minutes ago uh, and said all the right things that he needs to say, um, I think there's still some work to do. Um, and um, and as was also said earlier, uh, in terms of me from Amenu and the Labor Party, uh, what Merav Michaeli has done and, and brought the narrative back in is just, uh, is just exciting me and I think is really exciting for Israel. Mark, it was in fact a, a dramatic result for the Israeli left as well. No one, almost no one expected merits to uh, pass the threshold. And when I say no one, I say none of the polls expected it to pass the threshold. It looks like it might have seven seats, the Labour Party coming back from the dead. Uh, but you say you still see a path forward for the prime minister to form a government that is going to rely heavily, it seems, on the right side. Well, yes, but I, I, with all respect, I'm, I'm happy that some of Israel's uh, founding parties, you know, uh, many are probably happy that they were able to pass the electrical threshold and not go extinct. But seven, seven, and eight, that's, that's 22. I mean, we're not in the 30s, we're not in the 40s. So, you know, if there's a lot of celebration over those numbers, that's terrific on the left side. On the right, we have, as I said, there are 70 to 72 or 73 uh, mandates that will be right of center. Uh, where it all ends up, you know, what Liebman decides to do, but I think at the end of the day, as I said before, Bennett and Netanyahu, the religious parties, and I believe Gideon Saar's party will end up with Netanyahu, and you'll end up seeing a Netanyahu government. This, this will be Netanyahu's seventh government, 
uh, you know, when you're uh, on, on the football field looking to score a touchdown or the Super Bowl, you want Tom Brady. He just won his seventh Super Bowl. Don't bet against Bibi Netanyahu. This would be his seventh elected election victory, and I think it's good news for the Israelis. Uh, Nomi, uh, it does look like uh, there is a path forward for the prime minister to yet again uh, form a government uh, at this point. Um, we heard from, of course, uh, Naftali Bennett uh, earlier tonight. He seemed to insinuate that he still wants to change the government in Israel, saying it's time for a government that cares about the people. Do you also agree that there's always a chance that Naftali Bennett will join uh, forces again with the prime minister? Look, first of all, when you talk about Israel, you always talk about Tikva, right? So we always have that. Um, second of all, um, I understand what Mark's saying, and there is no doubt that, you know, what Bibi continues to accomplish. And as I said, he gave an excellent election speech just now. But the other thing that we've learned recently, and, and even for a long time about Israeli politics, is it's not the party with the number of seats that matters. We need to see who becomes the king, or let me even say here, the queen makers. Um, and that's what's important. And so you're right. We have to see um, what Naftali Bennett says. You know, Gideon Sar has made it clear that he will not sit with Bibi, um, 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 Bennett and Yamima have been more cautious. He, there's no doubt that he has been uh, critical of Benjamin but he, but he has not said that yet. So we definitely need to see what happens. We also, as I said, need to see where more results are coming from. Um, we're not done. We know that this can go on a while. We've seen this change before. Um, so we're going to see what happens. We, you know, there's talk of also seeing what's going to happen um, 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 with with. Uh, another Arab party and seeing what happens with those votes there. Uh, and, and he's still saying he's going to pass that threshold, and that's another four seats. Um, of course, we'll see what happens with all of this. Um, but but I'm, I'm feeling I'm feeling strong that we're going to see a lot of things change. And I, and I also believe that, um, you know, uh, we've heard that even though some uh, Israelis have voted for some of those parties, such as Bennett and Sa'ar, and, and, and even sometimes in Lapid, that they're still on other issues, still progressive, still uh, leading left, still believe in a two-state solution, still believe in a lot of those issues that, that we in Avoda continue to fight for, for the, for the Israeli people. Uh, and, and I believe that that's, we have to remember that too, that perhaps there was a shifting of priorities in this election, uh, because there really was this belief that it is time to move on from BB. Nomi and Mark, I want, with your permission, to bring in our correspondent Owen Alterman to also uh, ask you a question. Yeah, thanks to both of you for joining us. Um, Nomi, especially for you, though both of you want to jump in. Uh, looking at American Jews, do you think American Jews are going to be more excited by the fact that the left has done so well and the Labor Party coming back from the dead, as we've been talking about, or they're going to be more upset at seeing somebody like Itamar Ben-Vir be in the Knesset, be in the parliament, as well as the representative of the Noam Party, potentially, with his views on LGBT rights. Are people going to see more positives in this in terms of the way they connect to Israel or see more negatives? And, of course, the backdrop of all of this is, as all of us know, the vast majority of American Jews on the left side of the political spectrum, whether it be in American politics and Israeli politics. How do you see this election playing out? Of course, all of us assuming that the final results are the way they look at it to be right now. So um, uh, I don't know why Jews have to uh, only feel one way. Um, uh, isn't that what we do? So I think that, as you said, uh, the majority of American Jews um, are, are liberal, are progressive Jews. And so how delighted we all are here to see uh, Gilad Kari, for example, the first reform rabbi who's going to sit in the Knesset. This is wonderful. Um, and as you just talked about Noam, well, also Nissan Horowitz is still there. So we're going to have to see how these things play out. Out. Yes, there's concerns. Um, absolutely. We are, as I said earlier, and as you mentioned, we're concerned about the religious Zionists. We're concerned about um, that this government, uh, that, that the coalition may succeed and may be leaning even more right than it did before. Um, that is always a concern. Um, but I also believe that we now have an opposition, if that's what it is, or at least a coalition of people that support um, the values that are against um, uh, Bibi and, and what is going on there. Um, um, I think that uh, you talked about earlier how, you know, the narrative has now changed again in terms of the Labor Party. Uh, and I think for 
merits too. We see them on the table. We, we see that they're here, that they belong to institutions and ideology that go back to not just the creation of the state, but before, and that they, there's still a place for them. And I think that those are the values that uh, American Jews um, associate with and are proud of and is why we are proud Zionists. But there is no doubt that with each time that there is a, a right-wing government or if we end up and have to have a fifth election, you know, we're all banging our heads and saying, how can we be here again and how could this happen? Um, you know, but uh, we've also been through an election here in this country um, and, uh, and we saw some change and we saw that happened and that's positive. Uh, and I think that also having Biden here in the White House is, is positive for the message of, of liberal Jews in this country that will also be sent to Israel, to whoever that prime minister becomes, uh, and to whatever that coalition is. And so that will be different as well than perhaps what we saw in the last election in Israel when there was a Trump government here in Washington. And Mark, your view? Well, I, I have a different view. We all have our own views of what is positive. Uh, you know, there are a lot of attacks on individual members and then the so-called right coalition. We could go down the list and point out number seven on Labor Party who doesn't want Zichron Yaakov to, to exist, members of some of the parties that are against the state of Israel. So, I mean, I don't think that's positive to sit there and try to say, well, because there's one negative person in a party, let's just throw it out. You know, so I, I, I kind of rejected your, your accusations there. At least try to be fair in those comments. But uh, on the larger issue... At the end of the day, I think we're going to have Netanyahu. I know I think. I believe we're going to have Netanyahu. And I think that's terrific for Israel. Israel faces a lot of issues. Iran, uh, Europe, issues with uh, China, Russia, other countries. You want a person in there at night when a decision has to be made. You want someone who's tested, who's a terrific negotiator, can get things done, and is willing to stand up, even to, even to Israel's friends. And that's Netanyahu. I don't know who the leader on the left would be. And I wouldn't be very comfortable if I were an Israeli with that leader. Netanyahu has proven himself time and time again. Israel is almost a superpower, if not a superpower. It performed incredibly uh, throughout the pandemic when measured against other Western countries. And, and I think there's a great story to tell. Yeah, the economy has issues. Yes, there's a left-right divide. But, you know, relative to the American issue and the American left and how that doesn't comport with the Israeli, you know, right left, Israelis do not think the same way that Americans do on issues like Iran. On Iran, 80 percent or more of, the, of, of Israelis support the Netanyahu view. 70 or 80, 70, 75 of the members of Knesset support the right wing view on issues relating to Yehud and Shomron, Judea and Samaria. So it's, it is important for us to discuss what the American view might be and what the American left may think. And I would love for there to be Shalom bias all over the place. But Israel is the one Jewish state in the world. If there had been a Jewish state in World War II, perhaps most of the six million tragic souls that we lost would still be here. So I don't apologize for a Jewish state. And I don't apologize for a Jewish state that's run by a leader who has principles that may be right of center and that may not be acceptable to others. I look forward to uh, Israel being in a strong place with Iran issues with the Netanyahu government. I look for Israel to be in a strong place with tensions with Europe. I look for Israel yes. to be in a strong place when Iran does whatever it tries to do in Syria and Hezbollah and other places. And of course, so we're staying I'm on top of the numbers to, to see what kind of scenarios are still likely for tomorrow. Mark Levinson and Nomi Colton Max, thank you very much for being with us in New Jersey tonight. Thank you. Our Owen Alterman and Mitchell Barak as well. Thank you. We'll be back at the top of the hour with more. Thank you.